Welcome back. I'm Tedward, and today, thanks to Boston Motorsports, we're driving a 2018 Bentley Flying Spur. And if you're a little confused about where the Flying Spur sits in the Bentley lineup, let me elaborate. This is the second generation. And in the first generation, it was actually called a Continental Flying Spur because it was a four-door version of the Continental GT. So that means the Flying Spur is not quite as opulent and refined as its more expensive brother, the Mulzahn and Mulzahn Speed. There's also a couple of engine options on this flying spur. This one in particular is the V8, and you have the opportunity to also get a W12, which means that this flying spur is basically the ability to continue buying a VW Phaeton in modern times. But before I show you under the hood and really what's important, what's inside, let's take a look around. This is on 21 inch wheels and it's a square setup, 275 on front and rear. And they've made sure to put B's on everything, including the center caps, but also here on the other side, that is a B here, it's just mirrored. So it's kind of funny. You find little B's all over this Bentley because they're not shy about showing off how much money you spent on your daily driver. Back here, we've got these really trick quad exhaust tailpipes and then under this trunk. This is enormous. This is designed for all of the golf clubs, all of the luggage. This is really something kind of impressive to see. Although it's a driver's car, the rear seats are quite nice and they do recline and there's two settings for each rear seat as well as pulsing massage. This one has the nice pile carpeting and the doors are very large. This is a limo for sure, even though it is kind of the baby Bentley when it comes to the four doors. There's nice stitched leather all over the vehicle and everything you touch is basically going to be pleasing because that's the goal is to make sure that everything feels premium and opulent. So let's take a peek under the hood before we go for a drive. Under here, we've got our very forward mounted twin turbo V8. So despite the Bentley logos all over the vehicle, it's got Volkswagen Audi Group written all over it. But that's not so bad because that's probably going to put you in a better position for reliability and serviceability down the road. So let's jump in, start her up, go for a drive. Even though we do have soft closed doors, they do tend to want to close themselves pretty naturally anyway. I like the Bentley key and of course the typical Volkswagen switchblade. It's got knurled aluminum on the side and a funky panic button over here. Uh, you can insert the key over here, but we don't have to because we have comfort access or whatever Volkswagen Bentley calls it. It jumps to life really quickly and it's so nice to look at classical Bentley gauges. I really like the gauge cluster in this car. I like the way everything forms around the driver and even the passenger. The shape of this dashboard is fantastic. It's not boring. And we've got a gorgeous Breitling analog clock in the center of the dashboard. The controls for everything are really simple, but I really like the heated steering wheel button just directly on the thing. It says heat, done. No fussing around, no looking for things behind it. No, it's just right there. And then to get into drive, we have our nice knurled aluminum shifter as well with big B on it because they gotta remind you, you are a big dog. people expect these cars to just soak up bumps like you not hit them at all it's not what they do you will always notice imperfections you're always going to notice the world around you it's really difficult to make some sort of sensory deprivation chamber that still allows you to drive it because if you can't feel anything you can't drive the car uh, there are smoother cars than others this has a self-leveling suspension it does a good job of smoothing things out but you still are going to notice that you're driving over, you know, junky roads. Sport mode, let's see how she accelerates. I'll tell you what, yes, there's a 12 cylinder option on this vehicle. A 12 cylinder, a W12 that is probably very frustrating to find parts for, hard to service, quite expensive to deal with. This is 500 horsepower that will not let you down. This is quite stout. This is very powerful. And then where it's at home, highway driving, 80 miles an hour, 15, 1600 RPM. 
this just wants to go and go and go. But it wouldn't be a British car without some omissions, right? I do feel like there's more wind noise from these mirrors than I would expect from a Bentley, but it's fine. It's always gonna be some oddball thing in these cars. Ride quality is fantastic. Steering is phenomenal. Throttle inputs, I mean, I really do feel connected to the car. That's a fine, delicate balance when you get into these big luxury cars because, like I said, if you insulate things too much, if you become a sensory deprivation chamber, you can no longer feel what's going on with the car, which is the antithesis of a driver's car. Yet, they've managed to make this thing really docile, plush, but also sharp to the driver. And you want to make sure that driver inputs matter and that the damping that you've put in the steering and the throttle and the braking and the suspension aren't superseding the driver experience. No one's behind us. Let's get a taste of these brakes. Oh yeah. Definitely a save the princess kind of vehicle. big nose to tuck into a tight corner. You just got to be a little patient with it, treat it like a big heavy sedan, and get the job done. So unlike the Rolls-Royce Phantom or the Bentley Azure that I've been driving around somewhat recently, I could actually see this as a wonderful daily driver. It's special, it makes a presence and a stance on the road, but it's not ostentatious and outrageous. It's got just the right amount of opulence and luxury, and it's really entertaining to drive. I don't feel like there's too much of a sense of occasion in the car, which is kind of what you want. You know, if you're having a daily driver, you don't want something that's like tricky and complicated to drive because you're chasing the car like you do on an old world Bentley, a pre-VW Bentley, because those cars, they definitely feel more like boats. and. Sometimes that's entertaining, but day to day, not really my favorite thing. Actually, we're gonna go south. Cruising around on back roads, I'm just immediately warned by the fact that VW did a good job making these cars more driver friendly because the old world Bentleys, the Azures, those types, they're a lot more loose. There's more dead space in the steering wheel. They feel more like boats, like barges that you're coercing around a corner. Whereas this it really does shrink around you and you get all the lovely luxurious features that you want in your Bentley, but you don't have to put very much effort into driving it. the mistake of not putting on my massage chair. I'm gonna see what button it is. There it is, that's good stuff. You'll notice that we've got paddle shifters. They're column mounted and they're in a very strange spot because they're right here. I keep reaching for it when I go for the directional. It's a little bit frustrating. I would recommend these be in a different location or on the steering wheel. It's hard to look at the Bentley lineup and say that this is more of like the everyman's four-door Bentley, but it is. I mean. I don't know what this originally cost. I'm sure it was a very sizable sum of money. Except that, like, if you just have money, this is probably what you would want to drive. I mean, it do, it's not fussy. It's handsome without being ostentatious. Handles really nicely. I gotta say, 
even for 5,500 pounds, this is really nice to just chuck into a corner. The good news too, is from a safety standpoint, you're gonna be just fine. This chassis is beefy. I mean, you can pretty much crash it end over end at 100 miles an hour, and you're gonna be okay. I think you know if you're if you're in that echelon of wealth where you can use that money to be protecting yourself and your family. Like this is what I would want my kids to be riding all around in. You know, I mean, cars have gotten so much safer over the years anyway. So I'm not saying that your new Camry isn't safe. It's fine, but this definitely has another level of protection that you just feel the size of around you. It's pretty wild. Let's see how this all-wheel drive system gets us off the line. It's pretty effortless. Sounds good too. Yeah, this, this V8 won't leave you wanting for much more. I like the old school Bentleys. I like the six and three quarter liter V8s that came in the older cars. They're fun. They're entertaining. But, you know, this is a not a, a, a big step down. Let's see how she handles in a corner. that mid-corner bump like a champion. That's not something I would feel very comfortable doing in an Azure, okay, or a Brooklyn's. <laughs> this is really capable, and I know it's hard to see the Germans take over an iconic Briti uh, uh, British brand, but they did a good job. I feel like more people have animosity towards BMW with Rolls-Royce than they do with Volkswagen and Bentley. And Volkswagen and Bentley honestly seems to be a really nice match. They, uh, they work well together. turn-in is just really good. Like, I, I, I'm kind of blown away at how pointy and capable this is, although I shouldn't be. It's a D1 platform from Volkswagen. You know, we're looking at a Phaeton here. I guess the question you want to ask yourself is, do you want to be driving this or do you want to be driving an S8? The S8's fantastic, but it's not a Bentley. So if you want the Bentley, you got to just go for it. And now, thanks to depreciation on these Luxo barges, you can get them at reasonable prices, which is good. I mean, even, even through the craziness of used cars prices right now, you can still get heavily depreciated Bentleys, which is great. Unlike the old world Bentleys, I could actually see myself using this as a daily driver. This and the Mulzahn, but this honestly feels more daily drivable than the Mulzahn because it has less of that like boat insulation feeling. It doesn't feel like you're ever chasing it. Where it, it really does feel like kind of a normal car. And maybe that's not what you want. Maybe you're buying a Bentley because you absolutely don't want to be normal. I get that. Uh, but to me, this thing is just a joy. So thank you to Boston Motorsports in Brighton, Massachusetts for the opportunity to drive more on the lineup of the Bentley collection because there's always something else. There's always a variation, whether it's this. I'm sure there's a V8S coming in, and I'd love to drive a W12 to really compare it head-to-head. -head. But I got to say, I am absolutely not disappointed by the power of this like base V8 model. Thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. I'm going to go have a nice, lovely, relaxing drive back to the dealership to drop this thing off. Or maybe I'll just steal it and take it for a while because I could, I could really put some miles on this thing, man. If you've got like a New Hampshire house or a Vermont house and you're living in Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and you're doing like a couple hundred miles every weekend, 
this is the way. This is how to do it if you got some money. I don't have any money, so I gotta wait. See you in the next one. Don't forget to respect the drive. What do we have behind us? Is that a wraith? Looks like a wraith. Flying Spur meets Wraith. Seven Series meets Phaeton. There we go.